Loss in weight dosing systems continuously measure weight loss in the dosing hopper during the discharging of material. A precise load cell or scale does this automatically. The control permanently compares the actual and the set point value and adjusts when needed. But what happens when the material in the hopper has reached the minimum set amount? Simple, material needs to be refilled. But because the material weight is constantly being monitored, the control needs to be told that material is going to be refilled. This needs to happen during running operation while the system continues dosing. Mo has set up a dosing unit on a scale and is dosing granulate. His twin brother is helping him. He wants to dose 3,600 grams an hour. He writes down the weight every 10 seconds. Mo has calculated, assuming everything is set up correctly, that there is 60 grams less every 10 seconds. He corrects any possible deviations by increasing or decreasing the screw rotation speed using a potentiometer. Soon his dosing hopper is nearly empty. His twin brother sees this and starts refilling granulate. At the same time, Mo checks the weight. It's only very slightly less than the last value. Mo quickly increases the rotation speed so that more is dosed. But the next time he checks, the scale shows a number that is much too high. Mo is confused. With the loss in weight method, the discharge material is permanently weighed. This means that decoupling is needed for refilling systems. The contact of the dosing hopper is being discharged and is always decreasing. This decrease is permanently measured and the material flow is adjusted accordingly. At some point, there's a risk that the hopper will be completely empty and will need to be refilled. During the refilling process, a material flow is fed into the dosing unit that is larger than the dosing flow, which results in the material level in the hopper rising. During this time, material needs to continue to be discharged at the same time as material is refilled. This means that during this time, the discharged material cannot be measured. During refilling then, dosing is volumetric and uses the values that were registered during the last gravimetric recording. Mo gets it. He repeats the experiment. When the dosing hopper is nearly empty, his brother shouts, I'm refilling now! Mo waits until he's finished. When his brother calls finished, the scale still needs to settle. Then Mo continues with his adjustments. Now he has a look at how it works in reality. The material loader has filled the refilling hopper above the dosing station. This has enough volume to refill the dosing hopper in a very short amount of time. As soon as the control gives the signal to start refilling, the dosing hopper is filled in one go. This needs to happen as quickly as possible so that the volumetric dosing phase is as short as possible. But why can't you just make the dosing hopper larger so that you don't need to refill as often? It's better to have shorter gravimetric dosing times and therefore also shorter volumetric dosing times so that you don't become blind to changes in the dosing flow during this time. And the resolution of the load cell also plays an important role. Mo can confirm this. Taking exactly 10 grams of granulate out of a measuring cup is easy when using an accurate postal scale with a resolution of 1 gram. But he won't get far using his bathroom scale. A resolution of 100 grams is simply not enough. <laughs>